A coordination complex consists of a central metal surrounded by smaller molecules called ligands. In this experiment, acetyl acetone will be used as a ligand to prepare two complexes which have chromium and manganese as central metals. The two complexes will be denoted as 2,4-pentane-dianato chromium as well as 2,4-pentane-dianato manganese respectively. The characterization of our prepared crystalline compounds will be done by obtaining their melting points as well as obtaining their IR and UV vis spectra. The chromium acetyl acetone complex will be prepared by reacting chromium chloride hexahydrate with excess acetyl acetone. For the preparation of our chromium acetyl acetone complexes, we will accurately weigh 0.26 grams of our chromium chloride hexahydrate salt into a vial and record the mass from an analytical balance accurate to four decimal places. Once that has been done, you carefully transfer your mass into a 25 ml conical flask. Once you have done that, you then use a measuring cylinder to collect four milliliters of distilled water. Transfer the distilled water into the conical flask and gently swirl to ensure complete dissolution of your chromium salt. Once your chromium salt has dissolved, you then proceed to add your one gram of urea into the conical flask. Insert the bar into the conical flask and continue to swirl gently. Once your contents have fully dissolved, you then proceed to add one mil of your acetyl acetone using a plastic dropper with gentle swirling. Now that we have all our reactants in place, we will then clamp our conical flask and gently immerse it into our beaker of hot water. It is then important for us to cover our conical flask with a watch glass to escape our con to prevent our contents from escaping and we then leave it for an hour with continuous observation that our water does not evaporate. Once you have lowered your 25 ml conical flask inside the hot water, cover it with a watch glass to prevent gaseous compounds from escaping and you then leave it for an hour and observe as your crystals begin to form. Once filtering has commenced, you will then wash them with ice cold water to ensure to remove all impurities 
And once all the filtrate has passed down the filter, we will transfer our crystals inside a desiccator for drying overnight. Once our chromium acetyl acetone crystals have dried overnight, we will then measure its mass on top of the filter paper in order to determine the percentage yield obtained. To obtain the melting point of our chromium acetyl acetone complex, we then use a capillary tube inverted inward into the crystalline powder, then gently knock the powder down to the bottom of the closed end of the capillary tube. This will be followed by inserting the capillary tube into the optical path length of the melting point apparatus and begin heating to observe the melting point of our solid crystals. After obtaining the melting point of our crystals, we can further characterize them using FTIR and UV vis spectroscopy by dissolving them in DMSO or chloroform. In this part of the experiment, manganese acetyl acetone complex will be prepared by reacting potassium permanganate with excess acetyl acetone. For the preparation of our manganese acetyl acetone complexes, we will accurately weigh 0.25 grams of potassium permanganate on an analytical balance and measure the mass to four decimal places. Once that has been done, we then transfer our potassium permanganate into our 25 ml conical flask and dissolve it using four milliliters of distilled water. So will be followed by gently swirling our flask in order to ensure complete dissolution of our potassium permanganate. Once the solution has been achieved, we then use a plastic dropper to transfer approximately 2 ml of acetyl acetone. This will be followed by gentle swirling. Then we then use a clamp to hold our conical flask in position. Then we swirl it over a steam bath for 15 minutes and observe as our brown colored crystals begin to form. Once our 15 minutes of uh, swirling over the steam bath has elapsed, we then allow our conical flasks and its content to cool down to room temperature for about 10 minutes. For a further 10 minutes, we will then cool our contents in an ice bath and just let it sit uh, for another 10 minutes. That will then be followed by pre-weighing our filter paper and inserting it into our hish funnel for filtration. The contents in our conical flask will then be transferred into the hish funnel for filtration. Wash out any remaining crystals from the conical flask using ice cold water and transfer into the hedge funnel. Continue washing your crystals with 20 mils of 
ice cold distilled water to ensure obtaining high purity crystals. All right, so once our filtration process has been completed, we will then use a desiccator to dry and release moisture from our crystals and leave it overnight. All right, so once our dark brown crystals have dried in our desiccator overnight, we will then accurately weigh them on an analytical balance and record the mass to four decimal places. And having pre-weighed our filter paper, we will then be able to determine the actual mass or yield of our dark brown crystals. To obtain the melting point of our manganese acetyl acetone crystals, we will use a capillary tube to insert the powdered crystals into the capillary tube. Gently knock down the powdered crystals to the closed end of the capillary tube then insert the capillary tube into the optical part length of the melting point apparatus. Begin heating and observe for the melting point of our crystals. After obtaining our melting point values for our crystals, we can further characterize them by FTIR and UV spectroscopy by dissolving them in chloroform or dimethyl sulfoxide. This concludes the preparation of pentane dianato complexes of chromium and manganese.